As a society, we are taught pronoun usage through our formal education. And we talk about the male and female genders using pronouns such as he and she, him or her, and singular and plural using they. But what happens when we talk about people who demand different pronouns to be used? Different pronouns for people from the transgender communities and non-gender conforming communities. Well, this is the question which I wanted to ask Mina Tolo. Mina Tolo is a candidate for the European Parliament elections for the Green Party, Alternativa Democratica, and she spoke to me about the use of pronouns with members of the transgender community. Mina Tolo, thank you for being here for this interview. So let's talk about uh, gender pronouns, because that's something which you mentioned as well in your Facebook video, and the one where you called for a safe space to talk about abortion. First of all, how do you identify as? I identify as a non-binary trans person. So uh, by trans person, I'm, I mean someone who does not identify with the gender that I was given at birth. Uh, so the doctors, whenever someone is born, usually they go, yet yeah, male or female. I no longer identify as female, but I neither identify as male. And that's why we use the term non-binary. So to identify as something that is not male, not female. So in that case, that means that uh, the, the common pronouns which we use usually for male or female, which are he, she, him or her, do not apply in your case. No. So when speaking in, in English, it's best when people use they, which has become like a, a commonly used as, for, as a pronoun to refer to a person who identifies as neither male nor female. Okay, why is it important for people to respect these pronouns, especially for, obviously, for people who do not subscribe to genders of male or female, so to, to third genders and other genders? Well, by respecting someone's pronouns, uh, you show that you're actually listening to them, that uh, you believe that they know who, who they are, and so you don't force any idea of who you think they should be onto them. So by respecting my pronouns, uh, the people who respect my pronouns, or try to, because uh, I know it can be difficult at times, uh, then I know they see me and that they have listened to me. And uh, even though they might not totally get the whole gender thing or the whole gender spectrum thing, because it, it can be complicated and it, 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 unless you, I mean, it's something I was dealing with every day. I was talking about it every day because I'm an LGBTI activist. I've, I've been working in this area. I, I don't expect everyone to get it. Uh, but um, if they try, then, then it shows they've listened to me and they, they just say, OK, then you know who you are. OK, so how should I ask someone what pronouns they use? Just ask, what pronouns do you use? You know, it's like in, with this interview, you reached out to me and you said, Mina, I noticed in some comments that people are referring to you with different pronouns. I noticed uh, in your video you use terms like queer. So what pronouns do you use? You know, it's... Uh, it's I'd say the majority of people are using he or she pronouns and it's quite easy to know what pronouns a person is using based on their expression, based on how they express their gender. So for some people, if you, if you notice in comments or how we refer to ourselves in, I mean, in my case, if the party sends out a press release in English, they're going to use what we call gender neutral pronouns or gender neutral language. There's no he or she there but then you see how that's translated into the press. Okay, in fact, uh, this, the, this debate about pronouns, and we've seen it as well, the, there was the, the recent bill on gender in Canada, which also uh, propelled people like Jordan Peterson to, to worldwide fame over the, the whole issue of using pronouns and whether this is forcing people to, to speak in a different, in, 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 in a way which is imposed by the state. Obviously, it, it does open up a certain, um, it does present a certain problem for people who are used to uh, using he or she. Obviously, it implies that they are looking at a person and they are going to decide on the spot whether they think they are male or female according to how they look or according to the sound of the name. So this can be very difficult for people who are used to the traditional binary, even for those who think that they is basically the collective pronoun to, for seeing a group of people. So, so what do you say to that? I mean, it's, it, it can be really complicated for people of a certain age or people who are not really open to notions of, of other genders. Again, as I said, I know it's complicated. And when it comes to they as being seen as a collective noun, I say, OK, let's, let's have an example. You go into a shop and you notice that there's a wallet on the floor. You don't know who that wallet belongs to, but you go to the shop owner and you say, someone has left their wallet behind. Already there, you're this one person you're referring to, but you're using their, their wallet. 
someone has left their wallet behind. So it's, it is part of our language actually to refer to one person if you don't know their gender because they're not in the room usually because you've never seen them before uh, to use these pronouns. So I don't think it's a big leap to start using it for people who, who ask for them. What about people who refuse to, to use such terms? Is there going to be also a debate on people who deliberately do not want to use these pronouns. Will they be called out? I myself do not enjoy calling people out for not using the pronouns that I ask them to use. You know, I'm in politics, I know it's, uh, it can be tough. I know there will be a lot of comments, for example, on Facebook uh, What if they tell this. you that these are artificial constructions? They, they do that all the time and uh, quite frankly these are not people I'm, I'm often dealing with. I've never had anyone in a face-to-face -face conversation tell me, no me, I'm not going to use that, that's bullshit. That's never happened. And so clearly, obviously, I've got the circles that I'm, I'm exposed to who are more exposed to this and more willing to respect um, a, person's, a person's choice and uh, who people are and who people say they are. Online, I notice that a lot of my friends actually jump into the comment boards there and they start those conversations and continue those conversations. And, and I'm fine with that because, you know, people say, hey, you have to be a she or you have to be a he and that's how it is. And okay. It's not only just he, she or they, but there are the um, uh, gender neutral pronouns yes. in use. There's uh, they, Z and here, here. Yes. So these are all different gender pronouns which have been... They're uh, developed by people who identify as non-binary or trans uh, or gender queer to find a pronoun that fits them best. It's obviously going to be derided as being something artificial or something yeah. that is meant to confuse people. We, we can expect many people to just shut down when they are faced with this sort of, with, with this plethora of pronouns. Lang language is always evolving. I mean, there are some words in use now that we would have never imagined using 15 years ago. Just the fact that, that you knew the term non-binary and knew the term genderqueer is, is, is something new. Some people might be like, those are artificial terms. Or the meaning of them that we're assigning to them now are artificial. So. I, I don't see uh, any, any language that anyone comes up with is, is not artificial. It doesn't, language does not need to be approved always by some higher entity for it to be in use. Uh, we are always using new terms. In, in Maltese we see that, you know, and actually the way we speak Maltese and the way we adapt to Maltese to technological terms, for example, is always advancing, and some, sometimes faster than the Maltese Academy might be able to keep up, you know, and, and that's how it is. That's language. It's, it's living and that's, that's a beautiful thing. It's how we communicate. So changing language for me uh, or introducing new terms as queer people, I, I think that's important. Sent, yes. I think something that we also haven't spoken about yet is Maltese. Now, Maltese is very gendered as a language. And that's, that's another issue, like how do people refer to me in Maltese? I actually had someone message me this morning on WhatsApp, like, Mina, I realize I don't know how to refer to you in Maltese. And it's like, yeah, okay, let's, let's have a chat about that. Because some people in Maltese who use gender neutral pronouns in English, who use they, they or them in English, are using the plural in Maltese as well, Uma, which to some that, that sounds confusing. I try to think, okay, what's the, what's the purpose of that pronoun, right? You're using a pronoun to refer to a person when you don't want to use their name. In Maltese, you're also, through the gender of that pronoun, you're also changing the verbs or you're changing the adjectives, uh, which is when it gets even more complicated. In my case, I say, okay, people know my name to be Mina, which in Maltese sounds like a very uh, feminine name. If people use masculine pronouns for me in Maltese, but then my name is Mina, and then okay. that's balancing out the genders in a way. Okay, Mina, so I think we can agree that we, we're all on a learning curve yes. over here, and we've opened up a new challenge for Maltese linguists and academics. Thank you for the interview. Thank you.